Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com on Roku, Dwyer Boxing News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. True story. It's the morning after Lucas Mathis destroyed Lamont Peterson. I had read online that it was a masterful performance. I kept hearing that Mathis, um, or Matisse, however you want to pronounce it, um, now wanted to fight Floyd Mayweather. He was willing to gain weight to fight Floyd. I was on Twitter as the fight happened. I was out, didn't see it live. Uh, people on Twitter were crowing about the great performance. So then I sat down started watching the fight and maybe about midway through the first round I asked myself am I watching the right fight but right? it looked like Lucas Matisse it looked like Lamont Peterson but this certainly wasn't the virtuoso performance I was hearing about in the press this is one of those rare occasions where I don't get it at all in other words, um, you know, knockouts knock out both the guy who hits the canvas and apparently the memories of fans. Because there is no way you can look at round one where Matisse's missing hooks by at least a foot on occasion, right? Where Peterson is moving around the ring and Matisse has problems keeping up with him. Right, Matisse is throwing hooks, doesn't seem to have long power. There's no straight overhand right that can jump across the ring quickly. Right, he, he needs to set his feet. He's not quick on his feet, so his power is not sudden power. Right, he has to hunt you down. So as I was watching that first round, Number one, it looked to me like LeBron Peterson was winning the round, right? He's moving around the ring. He's sticking a jab. Matisse, to me, looks limited in the round, right? His punches are hooks, so they're coming from the outside, right? He's just trying to track down Peterson. As Peterson darts left and right, Matisse seems a second too slow. So then we get to round two. We know how the rest of the fight turned out. Matisse does have punching power in both hands. But understand, he's flat-footed. Right? He, you know, as you're judging fights, you have to ask yourself, how well does a guy move? You know, is he able to literally adapt on the fly or is he one of these guys who needs to have both of his feet planted right and because he's throwing hooks can't reach a guy who's a little bit further outside of him I think Lucas Mathise is the latter don't get me wrong he's very good at what he does in an earlier video that I believe is several weeks old here online I listed him as a guy who I wanted to see against Floyd Mayweather, right? Certainly, his fights are exciting. But how much of this fight was him? And how much of this fight was Lamont Peterson inexplicably abandoning his jab in the second round and deciding to fight a fighter, right? If Lamont Peterson keeps moving, if he fights a, let's say, we'll call it an Ali Andre Durrell style, where he's moving around the ring, he's sticking a jab, he's not allowing Matisse to set his feet. This fight, quite frankly, looked like it could have been an easy fight for him, right? The knockouts look dramatic. They look great. 
My point to you is you know something is wrong when a fighter is missing multiple shots by this far apart. I mean multiple shots. Matisse is throwing punches. He's loading up on every punch. And in that first round, which I think is the blueprint on how to beat him, right? Lamont Peterson's able to just move out of the way, and Matisse literally throws the punch anyway and is missing by this much. Understand what that means. It means that if he were fighting someone who could counter well, could time it, right? If he's fighting a James Tony, all Tony would have to do is wait for him to miss by about this much and then catch him because he's wide open. He, he doesn't protect himself as he's throwing these home run shots, right? You know, now after the fight, I was a bit amazed. Several fighters uninvolved in the fight commented. The fighter who interested me the most was Amir Khan because Khan, for all of his chin problems, right, and they're documented, he was down in his last fight. He was knocked out by... Danny Garcia before that. We can go back to the Breedis Prescott fight where he was knocked out in that fight, right? For all of Khan's chin history, maybe the word problem's a bit hard. The one thing we know about Khan is Khan can use length. He did against Pauli Malinaji, right? Not only that, Khan can actually deal with a mobile opponent, as he did again against Pauli Malinaji, right? Khan also can throw straight punches, right? That's the knock, in my opinion, on Danny Garcia, right? Danny Garcia is a mid-range hooker, as is, in my opinion, Lucas Matisse, right? Or Matisse. So my point is simply, a straight puncher who can move who could flick a jab at Matisse and move and throw combinations, has the faster hands, can keep the fight, and this is important, with a guy like this, can keep the fight in the middle of the ring, right? Think for the boxing hardcore, the first fight between Rocky Marciano and Ezra Charles, if you want to go way back, right? If you're fighting a guy with big-time punching power, but a little bit slow on the execution, right? And predominantly hooks, not a Vladimir Klitschko overhand right that can reach you, right? Not power with foot speed, Think David Hay, where he can come across the ring and catch you, but rather local power, right? I believe an American could conceivably completely undress Lucas Mathis. If he fights the same fight that he did against Katelnik a few years ago, what can Mathis do to him? Look at the first round again of this fight. How did you score the first round? Right? In fact, kill the volume. I know they're showing the fight repeatedly on cable television. Kill the volume. Just count the number of hooks that Lucas Matisse throws that miss Peterson by a foot. And just ask yourself, gee, what would happen if this were happening in the middle of the fight and Peterson was able to just time it where punch misses, he jumps in with a hard counter, right? Peterson is a warrior. That costs him in this fight. He should never have started fighting Lucas Matisse. Let me point out, the first knockdown, Peterson has his hand up. 
He just has the wrong angle. We talk about the sport being angles. He has his hand up like this. He gets hit on the forehead right here. Right? Look at the replay. The second time he gets knocked down, wow. You know, he almost looked like Powell Wolak. You should never have your feet parallel to the guy you're fighting. The problem is, if you get hit, you don't have a foot back there supporting you. If your feet are together, it's easier to knock you back, right? Why was Peterson so close to Matisse? Why did he have his feet together, right? In the post-fight interview, Peterson said that he got thrown off of his game because of rabbit punching during clinches, right? You'll actually see it. The two guys are holding each other. Matisse hits Peterson in the back of the head, right? The ref's a little bit slow to break the action. That apparently angered Peterson, and Peterson then threw his strategy out the window, right? Okay, great. I'll agree if a guy comes up to Lucas Matisse with his feet together, right, trying to trade with them, he's going to get blown out like Peterson got blown out. But before that happened, tell me why Matisse looked so disoriented in the first round, right? I mean, Matisse wasn't just slow foot speed wise in getting to Lamont Peterson, but then he would throw punches. And my point to you is, you know, a fighter has too much of a windup. When the guy starts to throw a punch, and the guy he's punching at is able to just walk away so that the punch misses by this much. To sum up, what's my opinion of this fight? It's this, right? It's the idea that Matisse was missing by too wide a margin against certain fighters. Maybe not Danny Garcia because the style's don't match up that well, right? In that fight, I would take both guys by KO, right? But against a straight puncher who has foot speed and can stay outside, I, I don't see how Matisse doesn't get completely dominated on the scorecards. Were he to fight a Floyd Mayweather, all I can say is, you know, I would expect Mayweather to be dominating on the scorecards the fight would really just come down to whether or not Matisse could catch up with him. Let me make another point, too. Zab Judah. Let's talk about that fight, right? Zab looks good early, and then Zab Judah gets tired, barely hangs on to win that fight. Fair enough. But understand that Zab Judah, as fast as his hands are, doesn't have great foot speed, right? I'm talking about foot speed with a long game, right? My point is simply, you know, have we seen Matisse in the ring with someone who actually makes foot speed an issue? You know, let me say, if there were a rematch between Peterson and... Matisse, I'm guessing Peterson would stick to the game plan he used in round one, which was very effective. So let me be a dissenting voice here, because I know people are saying, oh, Matisse looked great. Bernard Hopkins in the crowd on fight night said, oh, Matisse looked great. A lot of people with far more knowledge than me on boxing believe that Matisse looked great and stuff like that. My read is Matisse looked limited in that first round, right? Peterson gets sucked into a fight, only has himself to blame, right? But do you believe that everyone Matisse fights is going to get sucked into a fight? I'll agree he hits hard, and I'll agree in a 12-round fight, his opponent is going to get hit with some hard shots. But isn't it a problem that Matisse doesn't have that straight punch right down the middle. If he were to fight Amir Khan, and if Amir Khan were to move behind a jab, right? 
I think it's possible that by the fourth round, Amir Khan would have a three round to none lead. That's a problem, right? If you're a slugger and you need the knockout to win a fight, that's a problem. I'll be watching Lucas Matisse closely going forward. I'll just say, though, if he fights a guy with, we'll call it a long game, in other words, a lean and a jab, so the guy's body's not close to you, and the guy is maximizing his reach, right? If he fights a guy with a long game and movement, who can move behind that jab with straight punches, I think he's going to be in trouble. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.